everybody wants to be the banker. Today we're going to talk to State Bank Northwest about how their connection to agriculture makes a difference to farmers. Join us on another Ag Stories journey, exploring the connections between agriculture and you. With thanks to our sponsors, Ag Enterprise Supply, located in Cheney, supplying everything you need to get the highest yields out of your crops, and State Bank Northwest, founded in Garfield and now headquartered in Spokane. State Bank Northwest offers full service banking on a first name basis. This is a, an interesting Ag Stories because we're gonna talk about banking, which you wouldn't think about much if you were thinking about farming, but farming relies on uh, lines of credit and operating credit. term debts. That's exactly right. Yeah, no farmer has the money at the beginning of the year to be putting in all that. Uh, you are correct. And in, in today's environment, it is getting harder and harder to self-finance. You are correct. And it was no different 100 years ago. And so I wanted to ask you a little bit about the history okay. of, the, of where we are standing right now. Okay, there's great. been several name changes. Well, thank you. Well, we're standing in the little bank called uh, State Bank Northwest of Garfield. And the bank was originally chartered back in the fall of 1902 and was known as First State Bank of Garfield. In February of 1906, the bank moved to its current location, which is where we are now, 3rd and California Street here in Garfield. The bank survives the first national pandemic depression in 1907. It survived the World War II and World War I. It's so so uh, it made it through that 1907 pandemic and, yes. and rush on the bank. I think a lot of people have forgotten that there have been a lot of panics and, and uh, issues over the years that banks have faced, you including the war. Including the World War I, World War II, um, the stock market crash in 2009. Uh, of course, now we've got the pandemic episodes that are happening of now. 2020. Of 2020. And, yeah, there's a and so there's a lots of concerns and everybody's worried about stability of their financial institutions, which we feel quite confident in our ability to keep the doors open. Yeah. Well, one of the things you mentioned as we were chatting before was about how every little town used to have a bank. And That's true. I think in the turn of the century, 1900s, you know, there's probably three or four little community banks in each town. And as time has gone on, they've consolidated or, or been shut down because of the Great Depression or financial hardships and very few of them survive and little community banks uh, are even harder to find. And this particular little community bank you were telling me about the the uh, multi-generational nature of the bank which is uh, kind of a parallel to multi-generational farming. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. Um, the Johnson family came here from Minnesota in 1897 and opened up this little bank in 1902. And we still have a Johnson present on our director board of directors, and so that's the fourth generation Johnson. So we're we're still here. It's interesting. What are some things that you've seen uh, over the years where banking has been an integral part of the egg? Explain for people. Um, what that connection is and why it's so important to have the relationship. Well, we were a relationship bank and in today's environment uh, people like to come in, visit with us, have the capacity to call on the phone and visit uh, directly rather than a computer system. We know our customers first name basis. Again, we've been working with them for generation farm families. We've got some uh, young men that are farming now that are fourth and fifth generation from the turn of the centuries. And so it's all about trust, communication, loyalty, and dependability. And that's what these little community banks do. Well, one of the things um, that I know is so important for farmers is the uh, is that operating loan. And mm -hmm. I think if you could explain a little bit about how that cycle of the season works okay. economically for, sure. for a sure. farming operation. Uh, farmers are get paid once a year, and that's after their crops are harvested. And so they have all the expenses occurring throughout the year period. So basically this time of year, harvest has been completed. The end of uh, September, first part of October, uh, they can and do sell a lot of their commodities, pay down the line of credit. And at that time, we establish and sit down and look at their production forecast for the next following year and set up a line of credit to meet those needs as the expenses occur throughout the next 12 month cycle. And so it's a little different. Guys only get paid once a year mm -hmm. and there's a lot of expenses that have to accrue during that year period. So that's where the line of credit comes in. I, I was listening to uh, 
an AWB seminar where they were talking about economic development in rural communities and how it's a different kind of financial planning that you have to do when you get that once a year paycheck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, that would be something that a, a, a bank might need to know about if they're mm -hmm. going to successfully work with farmers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Uh, it's annual payments uh, are set up. The line of credit is due annually. Their income is basically due uh, from October to 1st of December. Uh, and then at that time, we sit down and forecast and project uh, for next year's production cost. Well, I've interviewed a couple of producers for this program who have, when I asked them the question, what's your favorite time of year? And they say harvest in January. Yep, yep. <laughs> we, we are really busy this time of year trying to forecast and, and help everybody through their crisis or needs. And then January kind of slows back down again. And then with the production cycle, planting in the spring, work in the summer and then harvest in the fall it just kind of all starts over so it's cyclical so there are good sides uh, good opportunities possible uh, profits and then there are some uncontrollable weather events uh, mm -hmm. commodity pricing that they can't control input expenses that they can't control so farming is cyclical and there is possibility of profitability but it's sometimes not always achievable so yeah. maybe not every year yeah. but you work yeah. on it over over time yes and that, that's the commitment with the little community bank uh, egg bank such as uh, us is that we understand that cyclical nature and we help them throughout their planning and their their programs right. and be able to identify the difference between a poor operation and just a, it was a bad year yes uh that's exactly right and the operations the, all these guys are professional hard-working mm -hmm. knowledgeable dependable and they just can't control uh, weather is the biggest obstacle. Pricing is the next obstacle. Mm -hmm. And we understand it's uh, cyclical and uh, they might not be 100% profit this year, but uh, we'll stay with them and over the long run, they, they continue to make a profit. Well, you are that small community roots, but you have branched out to, uh, to now it, it lists on your website, headquartered in Spokane. What, what made, the, made you make that shift? Yeah, it appears back in uh, 1997 or so, uh, the Johnsons were, were thinking of maybe trying to retire and step out. There's a group of investors that came out of Spokane thinking the need to develop a small community bank in Spokane would be beneficial. And in 1999, they went to North Point out there in uh, Mead area in Spokane. Mm -hmm. And that was very well received. And then they opened up a branch in the uh, Spokane Valley in 2000 and, uh, for, for the other need. Um, obviously, it's a bigger clientele niche, uh, more consumer lending, uh, commercial lending, uh, residential construction lending, and just a better or a bigger um, portfolio to draw from is, is kind of the need to, to ex expand out. So in a way, you're following the same path as uh, some of the most successful farmers, which is diver to diversify your base. That is correct. I guess diversification is, is important in today's world. So, yep. Okay. So what are some things that you've seen in, in ag economics um, that have changed in, in your career? I mean, you grew up in a, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a wheat country, mm -hmm. Roselia. I did. And how have you seen things shift over, the, over your lifetime? I think the uh, <coughs> small family farm has gotten absorbed into bigger corporation farms. The, s the smaller guys no longer in existence is because economics, they can't stay there. So we're seeing bigger operations, bigger line of credit needs, bigger term debts, uh, all for the good. But uh, unfortunately, the little, little fellow is no longer really practical. Yeah, and I know even those multi-generational farms, the ones that are still in going into the fourth and fifth generation have very often incorporated because that's kind of what you have to do to, to survive in the business world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching this episode of Ag Stories. This episode is sponsored by Ag Enterprise Supply, located in Cheney and Wilbur, supplying everything you need to get the highest yields out of your crops. And State Bank Northwest, founded in Garfield, now headquartered in Spokane, State Bank Northwest offers full-service banking on a first-name basis.